What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Idle Heroes. I want to thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button to show your support. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright guys, we heard today on the Big Daddy account yet again, but today we're going to do some gameplay. Um, now I've decided, I've decided in my mind place, I do get a lot of questions about it, and I really never focus too much on it, that's the Brave Trial. I did one a couple of days ago on the mini account, just kind of ran through it, that really kind of... Kind of like an afterthought, just kind of did it. Um, but today, I guess we're going to give it a little bit more of a try. I normally don't try, and I'm going to tell you why before we jump into it, because I feel like I want to explain myself. I rarely ever actually go balls deep and try in the Brave Trial, mainly because the rewards aren't very good. That's generally the point of it. Like, honestly, if you math it out, you get somewhere in the ballpark of like 2,500 to maybe 3,000 Brave Trial coins um, per run. If you complete all 15 waves, that's all 15 done every single time. You get about 2,500 to 3,000 per run. You get about 15 runs in a month because it comes around every other day. Um, it ends up actually mathing out to like between 3,700 or 37,000 something to like a little over 40,000 Brave Trial tokens per month. And that's saying that every single time it comes around, you fully complete it. Um, if you look at the rewards here, in an entire month, you essentially can buy, like, a bleaker. Um, <laughs> woo! Um, you could buy some random five-star hero. I guess you could pick up dust if you really need it. Most people focus on monster materials early game just to get their monsters upgraded. And that's okay, they're a decent purchase. But, like, if you really honestly think about it, in terms of, like, actual fodder returns... It takes you a month to get one five-star hero, which, in my opinion, is just, it's really bad returns. That's not worth my time to actually strip my heroes down and really focus on it every single day, um, hoping that I can get 15 waves, because the rewards really aren't that great. You know, just to put it in perspective, in my event raid, just boop, challenge, bam. I haven't done my event raid today, whoopsie doodles. Um, we'll do that later, I guess. But, I get a four-star hero... Every single day, I get two of them actually, every single day if I don't spend any gems to buy my extra deals, I get two four-star heroes every single day, just from event rate. If you math that out over the course of a month, that's 60 heroes in a month. It takes eight four-star heroes to make a five-star hero, so over the course of a month, I can fuse up seven five-star heroes from just my event rate to, uh, stuff. That's it. Seven five-star hero fodders over the course of a month with literally, you know what, you know how much thought it takes me to watch this. This is how much thought I put into my brave, tri uh, boom, my event raid. Oh God, that's tough. Oh, oh my gosh. So hard. Um, that's all I have to do. And by doing that, I make seven five-star heroes every month. That easy. So why break my back, break my brain, focusing on the brave trial to get one five-star hero every month it just it's not worth it right now so i don't really focus on it but some people like to hear about every side of the game so i'm going to show it today and today i'm going to try a cheese method for you i don't ever have a lot of luck with it i don't really do it that often either though so that could be part of the reason we're gonna go for it we're gonna go for it to do this um before i even start i know everybody out there oh it's because you have op valkyrie if i make it 15 waves that's what every comment's gonna be she's not op so just hush that up that's it's she's not Get out of it. Get over it. It's not It's not a fact. Um, but you can do what this cheese with pretty much any E3 hero is your first E3 hero. Um, back in the day, you, a lot of people used it with Gru. You can still do it with Gru. Um, it's not a big difference. But whatever. Mainly you want a tanky unit that can heal. And Valkyrie can do that. So we're going to leave her fully geared up because she's the backbone of my team right now. She's going to be the one that does all my damage, all my slaying. But everyone else, I want to be naked. I want to be naked, everybody else, because what this does, if you guys don't notice, put all this gear back on Vesa. 411,000 power. If I be naked her, like so, she drops down to 249,000 power. So she loses about 150,000 power doing it that way, artificially lowering the power of your overall team. If you guys don't know, that's how the Brave Trial picks your enemies. It picks, based off your team's entire power, the top six units you have, the strongest six units, it's going to take those units and say, okay, this is your average power level. That's where we're going to find your enemies. So if you be naked half your team or all your team, you artificially lower that power level. You're going to bring it down. The game thinks you're weaker than you are. And you have an easier time in the Brave Trial most of the time. Not always. <laughs> Not always. In my experience, it's generally about 50-50. What we're going to do, I'm thinking about leaving Cruz fully geared. Well, we're, we'll be naked him until I need him. How about that? Sounds like a plan. 
So with this done, um, we'll go ahead and, and here's the thing people seem to forget. If you have more than six heroes with gear on them, it doesn't take the top six heroes in your list. It takes the six most powerful. So right here, my Sigmund has 57,000 power. My Das, my Gurky, not Gas Moog. Does my Das Moog have stuff on him too? He does. They both have more power than my Sigmund. So the game would actually choose one of them as my six slot hero instead of Sigmund and artificially bump my power level up. So I'm going to go ahead and, and be naked both of them like so. And that's going to keep their power levels low enough that actually whew, it's still pretty close between Gurky and Sigmund, but it's an extra 20,000 points of power that I dropped on my team. Not a lot, but every little bit supposed to matter, right? So this is the initial game plan. You open up with your big daddy hero. We're going to go in. We're going to battle. Like so, my first enemy is all 9 stars and a 10 star. If you guys don't know, there's different thresholds of power that it faces you against. Your first, I think, 4 waves are a certain power level. Then the next 4 waves have a certain power level. And I can't remember exactly what it is, but they have a certain like threshold based to your power that they go against. And the last waves, obviously, are the closest to your team's max potential, so they're the hardest. These are a little weaker, and it's not a big deal. We're going to throw Valkyrie in here to start with, and we're going to throw the Deer Monster for heals. And I'm not going to throw anybody else in right now because I don't think I need anybody else right now. I'm pretty sure she can handle all this by herself. Usually about the first eight, nine waves, I can do with any hero I choose. If I decide to do just E3 Vesa, usually she can do the exact same thing for me, um, and she just most of the first eight waves. Then as the power level picks up, you got to start throwing extra stuff in your team and things like that. Um, just a 10 star bait. That looks tough. That looks real tough. Um, now, if I had kept full gear on my team, these would not be nearly as easy. Just that's a heads up. It does make a dramatic difference in the first eight waves, 100% every time I've done it. It makes first eight waves really easy, but I've never had an issue being them anyway, um, even with a full power team. But here we go again. Some nine stars, some eight stars, a 10 star, about 400,000 power. Pretty weak. But my team right now, what is my actual arena team if I put it on like this? What is my arena team? Just heads up. 1.4 million power right now, but if I went in here and changed it, I'm at a million power total. Because everybody's naked but Valkyrie. So a million power, that's not much at all. It, normally my team's at 1.4 like you saw, and that's with Valkyrie still being fully geared and stuff, so it's even a little higher than it normally is. But yeah, we're facing enemies much we My Valkyrie has more power than this guy's entire team, or about the same amount of power as the guy's whole team has. So obviously she, she just melts through these easy waves. But this is not something unique to Valkyrie, like I said. I used to do this with my Gru all the time. Gru did the exact same thing. He's a very tanky unit, has some heals with him. It works. You can do this with an E3 Dragon Slayer. doesn't matter. Whoever your E3 is the strongest, you can usually cheese through the first couple waves, leaving it geared up and be nakeding everybody else. Generally, that's how it works. Um, for earlier players, newer players, um, you just usually pick your healer. If you're using Norma or Vesa, whatever it may be, you're going to use that as your... See, still pretty easy. That's going to be your cheese hero you're gonna leave everyone else naked your best healer you're gonna throw some gear on it and it's gonna usually outlast your enemies and do better than them because you're fighting weaker enemies that's just the way it works it's a pretty simple concept it does work like i said it, it, there's no debating that it absolutely does lower your power level because it lowers your power level it what okay no never mind shh calm down people 600,000 power. If you read their power level and you see, oh, he's only got one enemy in his team, doesn't matter. The game does not accept your arena team as your your true power level. That's something people said, oh, just put one unit in your arena team. Doesn't work that way. Um, the game actually picks your top six heroes in by power, and that's how it determines this power level, because there's no way in God's green earth a 10-star Demon Hunter has 639,000 power. It's impossible, literally. A E3 Demon Hunter can't even reach that much power. So, that's a little heads up. That little number right there is not necessarily the power of the team they're using. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry, that was hilarious. She just, like, shot me and died. It was hysterical. Um, <laughs> whatever. Not a big deal. Um, same guy again. Well, look at that, Big Matt. You get you get a try again. Go for it. Go for it, big boy. Boop. Bing. Dead. Okay, hot. Hot news. That worked out pretty well for me. Um, but yeah, that number up there is not the power of your team. It's just the overall power that your account has. So it's just something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind. First eight waves, like I said, generally a joke. They're usually not very hard. And like I said, if I don't even finick with my gear at all, if I leave all my gear on, don't change anything, I still have no issues being the first eight waves. Ever. I, I just do it. Every time, I just blast right through it. It's not a big problem. It's when you start getting beyond that, when the power level starts to scale up. As you see, we're at 850,000 power now. 
Got an E1 Walter there. I don't think this team will be hard enough to kill me. It doesn't have enough healing um, to outlast. Now, here's the thing. People underestimate Walter now. He's not terrible, especially if you're using, like me, you're cheesing with one unit. An E3 Walter, if he has something like a Vesa behind him to heal him, will absolutely rip your Valkyrie to shreds and kill her. Because he has damage over time on top of permanent crowd control, pretty much. He'll constantly keep her stunned. She never gets a chance to attack. And the Vesa will constantly heal their team to keep your Valkyrie's damage over time uh, when she's crowd controlled from killing them. So it's something you got to keep in mind. I think we're okay just running Valkyrie by herself right now. Might be a bad idea, but eh, whatever. Whatever. Life is short. Let's give it a shot. If I lose, it's because I'm stupid, but, you know, it's just part of life. As you can see, okay, so it's going all right right now. It's going okay. As, like I said, as he keeps stunning her, she keeps dropping damage over time on the enemy. And normally, like I said, that's it's a good deal, but if he, they have enough healing behind them to keep you from actually dealing enough damage to kill any of the units... That can actually kill your Valkyrie. I've had it happen. Um, E3 Walters can kill Valkyries. Just watch out. It does happen sometimes. Um, but that's what we get. We got through Wave 9. No problemo. Looking here. I'm not seeing anything super dangerous. Um, nope. Nothing really dangerous to Valkyrie. So this should be another fine one to run just by yourself. This has actually been a really lucky run. Usually by now I've hit something that's like really annoying. But, you know, not always. This isn't bad. We're still pretty early. Wave 12 is usually what gets me, whether I'm fully geared or not. Because that's when you jump into that last bracket of power, I think. And they jump up and you start seeing the E3s pop in. Um, but right now, it's going pretty well. It's actually fully healed on that one. Good job, Valkyrie. Good job. Here we go. Still in the same power bracket. 850,000. Um, hmm. Cruz has stun. Demon Hunter has silence. Bloodblade does more damage to rangers, and you gotta watch out for them. I have been pooped on by Bloodblades before, and it's really sad when it happens. But they can kill a Valkyrie. It does happen sometimes. He does have a Vesa as well. I'm gonna risk it. I'll try. I'll risk the biscuit. We'll try it solo and see how it works. I'm not, you know, we might lose because of that, but we may also not. It's looking okay for now. Starting out pretty good. Okay, Bloodblade did a huge amount of damage, if you just saw that. That was enormous. Okay, we're doing okay, though. Deer's coming back in, coming in clutch. But you see how much damage that Bloodblade did to my Valkyrie? That's a 10-star Bloodblade. That was only a 10-star. He dropped 4.5 million damage in a very short amount of time. And when you get E3 Bloodblades against a Valkyrie, you've got to have somebody to cover her, or someone to heal her, someone to stun, something. Because if you don't, he can kill your Valkyrie. If this team had better crowd control, I still could have lost there. Just heads up. Um, just because Valkyrie heals when she's crowd controlled doesn't mean she's necessarily impervious to it. Um, I've been in many fights where I fight crowd control heavy teams that have like a Bloodblade or a Heart Watcher mixed in. And the 9 star Bloodblade will drop like 9 million damage. And you're like, oh my god. Gotta be careful, peeps. Everything has a counter. Valkyrie is no exception to that rule. So here we go. We're on wave 12. It's jumped up to a million power now. Um, I see nothing in here that's a real threat to Valkyrie right now. This is a really lucky run. Um, crowd control, crowd control. A little bit of poison dot here, but I don't really fear Molassa all that much. Um, so I think Valkyrie will probably be okay by herself again. Usually by now I'm in kind of more of a dookie town, but hey. I'll take it. A lot of the times I'll run through this, and at the million power level, I'll run into people that have like one or two E3 units and everything else sucks, and you're like, ah, oh, great. Because those are the teams you got to watch out for. Those are the ones that really get you. So right now we're doing good. We're doing just fine. Working out really well. Surprisingly well, actually, but it's okay. 13, here we go. This is more like what I start to see. This guy's a little lower in power, though. 857,000. That seems like he should have been back a couple of waves. But you'll get waves like this. But instead of that being a Dragon Slayer, it's like a scary. And you're like, oh, no, that's going to hit me pretty hard. And if it nukes your Valkyrie down low enough, that can be game over. Um, even if it doesn't kill you, if it gets you super low in health and the next round you jump in, it can still kill you. Um, this one right here, though, I don't see any real issues at all. Um, E2 Dragon Slayer is not going to be a threat to an E3 Valk. He does have damage over time, but it's not a heavy damage over time. It's more of like an annoyance. Um, so I think we'll be fine here. This will be probably a pretty easy one, actually. Boop. Get dead. Get dead, enemies. It's gonna happen. Just deal with it. Accept it. Accept your fate. Boop.
There's the Deer Monster coming in clutch. Without the Deer Monster and without an E3 Valkyrie, this is much harder to do um, because that resilience passive, no matter what hero you're using, E3 King Barton does pretty much the exact same performance as you've seen Valkyrie doing in most cases. Um, same with E3 Gruz. Anything that's really tanky, once you get that resilience passive on it, becomes really hard to kill. Um, and that's kind of why you start to see those things pop up. So here we are, wave 14. Hmm... Cruz has crowd control. Demon Hunter has crowd control. E3 Karim can be an annoyance, but the question is, is he going to be enough of annoyance to actually really worry about countering him? He usually is more of a problem when you have a team behind you and they start to die. Um, uh, do I want to start throwing teammates in just to make it... No. We're going to try it just with Valkyrie. I feel like my Valkyrie can make it happen. Um, hmm. I trust her. I trust she can make it. I mean, Karim can sometimes screw you over, but usually he gets me worse Um, when I have a team that I try to throw in with. Ooh, maybe I made a mistake. Mistakes might have been made. Big time. Oh, yeah. Karim's going to kill me. This is it for me. Made a bad decision. Bad decision made. I... Like I said, sometimes Krim will get you, sometimes he won't. Um, as you can see, put out most of the damage for the team. Probably should have had a blocker in there. Um, but, since we've made a mistake, we've made a boo-boo. Now we gotta we decide if we can actually finish this out or not. Can we beat it? I don't know. E3 Vest is okay. Um, what we're gonna do, though, obviously because Valkyrie is now dead, we're gonna remove all of her gear. She doesn't need it. She's artificially boosting our power level now because she's, you know, she's dead. Um, what do we got here? All Priest gear and the Guilty Crown. We can make Vesa our new top tier unit, I guess. And let's go ahead and let's try this a little bit different. Let's throw. I don't know. We're, I'm just thinking in my mind right now. I want to throw a couple of units in, but I don't want to throw enough units in that Demon Hunter and Karim become overly powered. Let's try something like this and let's see if we can sneak through it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Probably should have put Vess in the back line, but it's too late. It's already happened, so we're just going to deal with it. We're just absolutely going to roll with it because it's already happening, and there's nothing else. Ooh, that hurt. That hurt bad. Um, got some stunnages going in. That's always nice. Don't stun my Vessa. Okay. Okay. Still going. Still going. Shia, please do some damages. Okay, she is dead. Uh-oh, we're in trouble now. We're in trouble. He's going to kill her off too, isn't he? And he's healing for a buttload. Boop. Yep, yeah, we're going to die. This is it for old Rathy. I overestimated my abilities. And that's what happens. So there you go. Shows you right up straight up front. Valkyrie is absolutely not overpowered. It's a stupid argument to make. Um, if you make it, that's because you just don't know what you're talking about. Even an E3 Karim can kill her. As you just saw, it just happened. And the team behind him is not that great. I mean, a 10 star, a 10 star, it's not impressive. Um, so there you go. There you go. Burst damage does not do, you know, does not do well by Valkyrie. So we lost. I could have beat that, definitely, for sure, if I would have played it a little smarter. I debated throwing my Cruz in on that one. I was like, nah, let's see if Valkyrie can take it alone. If I'd have thrown my Cruz in the back line, Karim would have hit him with the active skill and probably stunned the team. Saved my Valkyrie some damage, um, and I feel like I probably could have made it, but it's not a big deal. Like I said, it's just showing you how the cheese works. I went a little overabundant. I tried a little too much, and I lost. But there you go, my Valkyrie did clear her all the way through 13 waves by herself. But like I said, when you do the cheese, a lot of heroes can do that. Um, King Barton, for sure, absolutely can do the same thing. I've watched him do it. Um, Bereas can do it. Really, any tanking unit with resilience can make it through a bulk of your waves if you gear it all the way up and make everything else weak. It generally happens that way. I feel like I could have made all 15 waves this time if I wouldn't have been dumb with it, but sometimes you're just dumb with it. Sometimes you're dumb face. Um, but I only gained, what, a little over, like, 2,000-ish, 2,000 straight up, pretty much, of the coins around about. Like I said, to go through, I mean, I guess it's not a lot of work, but then you gotta go back and re-gear up your whole team, make sure everybody's back to being unnaked. How's your stats? Wow. Oh, wait. <laughs> I was like, wow, you lost a bunch of health. Um, but yeah, when you run it with full ranger gear, by the way, it's not a good build. I never do that because it's horrible for her. Um, you want to give her two-piece, two-piece. That's just the way you want to do it. Um, replace, replace. Boop. And there you see she goes up to 5.3 million health instead of 4-something million health. Just boom. All Ranger gear. Not uh, 
really on any hero, it's not always the best idea. Like on my Vesa, a lot of the times I run um, 3P6 star. If I don't have 3P6 star right now, do I? Nope. I do have 3P5 star, though. We can do that. Won't be a huge loss. I mean, it'll be a loss, but it won't be a huge one. Like boop, boop, and like boop. And that boosts your attack higher, because when you have the 3P set, you pick up the attack percentage buff. And then from the actual priest weapon here, I get attack, attack, attack. So I get the most possible attack out of my unit by not running the entire gear set. Just something to keep in mind if you're using class-specific sets. It's not always the best idea to just throw the whole set on somebody. Um, swapping it around can actually be more beneficial in other ways, like for raw damage output or raw attack. This is a better setup. It'd be better with six-star gear, but whatever. We're not worried about that. Um, let's go down to Cruz. He needs the priest gear. Let's give it to him. You don't need ranger gear, though. That's for dang sure. That is for dang sure, Cruz. You don't need that at all. But there you go. 1.1 million health. That's not bad. Give you some reduced damage again because you're going to need it. Boop. There you go. 1.3 mil. Looking hot. Looking good. Um, this is going to give him ranger gear, too, isn't it? Okay, let's go ahead and fix this. Let's nip this in the bud, and let's just go ahead and put the ranger gear back on you, and then just remove this and this. There you go, bud. You're good. You're good to go. Pop this on. There you go. Double HP. Also, if you're worried about tankiness, this is another strategy people use. It's just two two-piece sets instead of a full force-piece set. Does give you more HP. Does lower your attack a little bit. Um, but on Shia, it's not a super huge deal because she does a lot of damage over time anyway. Um, let's throw something like that on you. And Heart Watcher will get you unbenaketed. Throw reduced damage on her probably because she dies really easy. I don't like that. But there we go. That looks all right. We'll make that a thing. Do I want to reduce damage on you? I'll put block on you. There you go. I actually put that on. Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Shh, doesn't matter. We've, we're all geared back up. Like I said, it doesn't take a bunch of time to do the cheese. It's just, to me, it's more effort than it's worth because the rewards aren't very good. Not saying it's super duper hard, um, but it's also not super, super worth. And like I said, even on that one, I, I probably could have beat it. But over the course of an entire month, saying you never make a mistake and you do all 15 waves every single time, you're still not getting all that much in return for it. So, I mean, if it's something you just want to do for min-maxing yourself, go for it. Um, but don't, like, focus your team around it. Don't make it your primary focus. It doesn't reward you enough to be worth primary focus on your team. I would still say do your boss fights, worry about your Aspen. Even the arena rewards more than the Brave Trial. And that's saying something, because the arena does not reward very much. Um, so just keep that in mind. But we'll, but we'll do a couple of tower missions. Let's go to 485, break it up a little bit, do something besides just the Brave Trial trial and uh call it a day how about that let's try nah we'll just go for a team let's not be let's not be cheeky people let's just go in and poop on the souls of our enemies just like so 1.38 million power it's not a lot of power but it's more than enough power to kill a bunch of normas i guarantee it norma is not that strong um especially when it comes to damage over time. Really, most healers have big issues with crowd control and damage over time. That's their biggest weaknesses. And that's why Vesa, once you take her beyond 10-star, really falls off in the Aspen Dungeon because a lot of the waves that give you trouble are Blood Blade, Walter, you know, things that have crowd control or heavy damage over time. It really counters the crap out of healers. And there's not really a great counter to damage over time in the game right now. Um, you could say maybe Cthulhu. Cthulhu might be a damage over time counter because he can't get bled or burned. Um, but really, it's not a lot that counters it super well. Because it's really, it's unresistible damage. You're going to take the damage over time regardless. Um, there's really no way around him. Mean, you can try to out-heal it, but you have to have a, an insane amount of healing. Woo, Gherkinator, get there. Holy crap -o. He was like, hey, what's up? What's up? You're in the Gherkinator stage. And he, he scared me a little bit. I, I got scared. Look at that. Vesa out damaged the Valkyrie. Obviously confirmed Vesa is OP. Um, get on board. So here we go. There's a Blood Blade in that one. That's interesting. Decent amount of healing. Usually not an issue for Valkyrie's damage over time. Because like I said, you have to have an insane amount of healing to counter her damage over time. But that Blood Blade just might give me a little bit of a fit. A little bit of a tizzy. He might give me. Um, because he has extra damage to uh, rangers. And guess what Valkyrie is? She's a ranger. And guess what counters Valkyrie? Damage over time. And guess what Bloodblade does? Damage over time. But he's looking a little weak right now. He's looking a little bit looking a little bit scared. He's going to die. He's dead. Okay, so Bloodblade, no longer a threat. Absolutely no longer a threat. He is dead. Well, we just kind of pooped all over the souls of this one. That was good. That was a good run. I feel better about myself.
Give me that. Give me that loot. 485. Back up. Ooh. Now, I know this one before has given me a huge amount of problems like on Seasonal. If you don't have a great counter to healing, which is what this node is literally entirely about, it's incredibly hard to kill them. I mean, you've got double Vesa, double Ormus, a Gurky, and a Michelle all popping heals constantly. And it is, like I said, it's pretty hard. If you don't have a really good burst damage unit, um, uh-oh, Lodi screen. If you don't have a really good burst damage unit or heavy damage over time, even heavy damage over time is kind of hard to do on this wave. Maybe Valkyrie can do it because her damage over time is based on her health and it can hit pretty hard. But as you can see, they're doing some pretty good work on me already. And I'm not, okay, we got, got a couple down. Shia also helps counter this a lot. Keep that in mind. She breaks attack, but she also nukes pretty hard. And nuking is very handy when you're fighting heavy healers. There we go. Look at that. Nuke down that Vesa. It all makes a difference. Comes together, makes this one quite a bit easier. Um, I'm really, I'm, you know, I'm really loving my Shia. I can't wait to have her at E3. I really want to see what she can put out. Because she does a lot for a 10-star unit. She already does a lot of damage and has a lot of utility for my team. I like her. I really do. I mean, she's not putting out Valkyrie-esque damage, but she's also, you know, not an E3 Valkyrie. She's a 10-star Shia. But anyways, we'll just do a couple. I'm not going to go crazy with it. We'll push up higher later. I don't see any scaries in the future so far, so that's a good sign. A lot of Grus. Three Grus. Get ready for the Gru nodes. It's going to be a thing. But I think that's going to be it for today. It's kind of what I talk you through the cheese. Show you guys a little bit about it. Um, like I said, I did lose, but I, I'm pretty sure if I would have played that like not an idiot, I probably could have beat it. Like I, said, I just don't do it very much. It's not something I focus on. I usually just leave my team fully geared up, make it through 12 waves, take the loot, and then go do something else. Um, but anyways, that's the Brave Trial. A little bit of tower in there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please make sure. Smash that thumbs up button to show your support if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And tell your friends about it because that definitely helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one.